Hey everybody, Hi. I am Chad Wesley Smith. This is a very special episode of the Jug Life Podcast. Joined as always, but this time via FaceTime, as he's up at the American Open Series 1, Mr. Maximum Notorious M-A-X, Max Ada. Max Ada, everybody. Doing well. Good, good. You excited? Got a big afternoon of lifting for the team this afternoon? We got a lot. We got uh, 28 people this weekend. You're going to be a very busy, very tired man the next time I see you. And we are joined by a, a bevy of guests, the Iron Sisters, some of the most accomplished powerlifters, uh, male or female, really, in the entire world. So as we can kind of go around and introduce one by one. I'm Jen Thompson. Marisa Inba. Bonnie Kawa. Kimberly Walford. Francis Manius. All right. So we're very excited to have them here. They got uh, a few seminar events going on this weekend, in fact, uh, well, last weekend when you're watching this. But today at Barbell Brigade, yeah. and then tomorrow and Sunday at Juggernaut. So before we get into what Iron Sisters is and, and everything you guys are doing there, very recently, you all had a very kick-ass weekend. Heck yeah. Uh, Arnold Sports Festival, huge event for the USAPL IPF, and uh, really the, the top performers of the whole the whole weekend, so I'll, I'll brag about you guys for you, so you don't have to, you know, toot your own horns. Correct me if I'm wrong on any <laughs> on any numbers here. I know it started out Friday. Bonica was the Raw Challenge champion, Correct. and just missed the 606 world. What, yeah. That would have been world, world record. Well, not well. official because it wasn't official. Oh, okay. I can't be, but unofficial. Yes. Correct. Speaking of unofficial world records. <laughs> Miss Kimberly Walford had one of those to her credit. You pulled 562? 67. 67. That's 217 and a half kilos? Yes, that's uh-huh. No. That's not kilos. You know kilos better than me. Yeah. No, 257 and a half kilos. 257 and a half kilos in the pro deadlift, and that you won. How many times in a row have you won that? Six times. How many times have they had that? Talk a little louder for me, too. Oh, okay. There we go. We gotta, we gotta pick up that voice. No problem. And then uh, another bench press world record yeah. for Mrs. Thompson here. Yep. Uh, 314. Mm -hmm. So 142 and a half kilos. And this was because you had just made that 317 and a half, but you were actually lifting as a 72. Yeah. Is that right? Mm -hmm. A 63.172? Yeah, I was like 138.8. Nine. Was that <laughs> was that intentional, by the way? Or? Yeah. Okay. I've been looking for a meet because, like, um, I actually broke eleven world records with between the single lift and the full powerlifting bench press, and then the open and the masters. It was eleven world records in like, one meet, just in bench press. <laughs> you know, Max and I were actually talking about this. How many <laughs> records someone? Cause we had a whole episode on this a few weeks ago about making powerlifting more competitive, and you know, we we host meets at the gym. And we get into giving a lot of first place medals for divisions with one person in them. And we had someone contact us looking for sponsorship who had how many state records? 70, 74 state records. 74 state records. And we were theorizing, you know, like, I wonder how many How do you meets, get that? <laughs> like, how many meets has this person done? Like, I bet it's two. I bet they did yeah. two records. <laughs> and I, I think it would be possible to break 36 records in one meet. If you did like, you know, two division, if you're masters and open and then full power, bench only, push pull, deadlift only, uh -huh. and then, you know, you break it on the opener second, yeah. third uh -huh. kind of thing. I think, yeah, 30, 36 records, but uh, you, these were real world records, yeah. not the made up ones that, <laughs> that we're talking about here. I think so, the only one I didn't break on the first one was the open single lift bench press for the 72s, and then, um, but I did the, it was the open powerlifting and then the masters open and single lift yeah. and then after that it was all of them for the next two so so you didn't 11. you didn't open with the world record i did they did for the masters, for masters. and well, then yeah, for the uh, maybe, open maybe next time then. maybe next time <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll be, we'll be i almost considered changing it <laughs> for that reason but i decided not to <laughs> and then of course you had quite the day Stella. nine for nine grand prix First champion ever. white lights on right. squat yeah. 27 white lights. It, it, yeah. I'm thinking it might be the first time I've ever even coached someone who went 9 for 9. Because I've, defi I've definitely never done it myself. But yeah, world record total. <laughs> the, the real lift. The one lift that matters. The total lift. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's all three. I mean, 
That is awesome. So it was a phenomenal, phenomenal weekend for for all the yeah. women here. Uh, you know, continually pushing. I think what people's concept of of what is possible for female strength athletes further and further, and uh, you know, getting a ton of publicity while they're at it. You've been all over everything. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, that yeah. Liberty um, University thing like just catapulted <laughs> me into like I don't know craziness. How many how many views have those videos gotten? Do you know? Millions. Millions. Yeah, and like in different sites, and it keeps popping up, and I just had no idea that was going that way. <laughs> Well, that's because Marissa's had like viral videos before, uh -huh. not powerlifting at all. So it's it's the pull yeah, up. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, pull up. Video goes viral. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that everyone's like, oh, you're the chick that bench presses a lot instead of where they're like, you're the, the dancing pull up person. <laughs> <laughs> you're a stripper on a horizontal bar. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, I don't think anyone cares. No, somebody asked me that. Oh, yeah, people are stupid. Yeah. <laughs> So, so with all that publicity and with what you guys are, are doing with the Iron Sisters, tell me a little bit more about this seminar tour that you're going and what the, what the goal with that whole thing is. You know, you, you bring up the fact that these gals have a lot of celebrity right now, and it was only a short time ago, really, that you know I was made aware because I started powerlifting and just dabbled in 2010 and then 2012, kind of jumped in with both feet. And at that point, um, you gals were competing in Russia, the, the first IPF. Um, worlds, you know, so I see Kimberly deadlifting over 500 pounds, I see Jennifer benching over 300 pounds, and I'm saying to myself and the people around me, what, why doesn't anybody know these people? Why isn't anybody talking about these people? So, like, really, Iron Sisters started because I thought, you know, I know that they can toot their own horn, but just like you said, they're not good at doing it, or they weren't back then, right? And I think everybody's kind of in a better position if somebody else says hey this is what you've done and i want to celebrate that and i think that was the, the founding factor for iron sisters so it was first to celebrate what these great strength accomplishments were right by women and and put them on the pedestal and and you know cheer for them and say hey also let's you know share this with so many other people if we can and then let's educate others to, to basically what's possible, you know, in the world of strength for women. Because for the longest time, right, I've been in the gym and competing in bodybuilding and, and doing these things myself, but, you know, it was just me and maybe a select few. And we, we need to see more and more women get involved. And so to celebrate for one, to educate more women, to say, hey, this is truly possible, and then to take the best in the world, basically, and to say, you too can get better by doing the kinds of things that they're doing, which, and that's basically where we started, and here we are today. And how many, uh, how many seminars have you guys done thus far? So we started in, uh, in Canada with one. Kimberly came up, and, and there's a story in that as well. Got food poisoning on the way, on the way to the, uh, the event. Managed to pull it off, you know, just yeah. said, I'll do what I gotta do, right? Coach, put me in, I can squat, bench, dead, like no problem. Um, and so that was in the summer of 2014. Um, the following year at Arnold's, I introduced myself to Jen and um, Bonica, brought Jen up for the second year in, in uh, Canada where we run this in, uh, in Hamilton, Ontario. Uh, that was 2015, we ran another event then. Um, we decided uh, basically last year after Worlds, right? That we'd bring Bonica on board and on the birthday. Oh, on your birthday, birthday. Was it your birthday? <laughs> it, was, it was your birthday present. Welcome to Iron Sisters. Um, and then created Iron Sisters USA. And you know, here we are, sort of launching the, the camps across the U.S., which, which is yeah. So we're relatively new in this endeavor. Very cool. Very cool. The uh, I mean, as I personally travel around, you know, doing seminars and stuff all the time, and it's a very, I mean, certainly rewarding experience. But it's it's fun to get to see the you know help conquer like a new problem every weekend or every other weekend as you're as you're doing these, and and just see that joy on someone's face when that's like it clicks for them. And they hit that PR, so very, very, very cool with all of that. Let's talk about you know as your guys' athletic backgrounds, what got you into, into powerlifting, how long you've been training, uh, you know, because of the, the this explosion of social media popularity stuff. I, I think even though people may have just only recently heard of you, they don't realize the decades of work that have <laughs> gone into to doing the stuff. So, Kim, I know you were a track athlete before because we've had you know done an interview with you before so 400 meter at university of florida and then so how how long have you been like seriously training 
lifting weights since I was 13, so about 25, 26 years. 25, 26 years. And how long for powerlifting? It's been about 16 years. Six? Damn, I don't know. It could be that long. Okay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying, I, didn't, I, I just didn't know. So 16, so 25 years. So a lot of, I mean, you've been training as long as a lot of the girls you're competing against have been alive at this point. And I think that's something that important for you know any women watching it's not you know you're not taking your bench from 135 to 205 in a year like it's, it's just not going to happen like putting that expectation on themselves is going to be an unrealistic thing that with the bench press particularly i don't want to talk to jen more about that but it's it's a long road for the female lifter eking out kilo at a time like when you started the first time you benched jen how much could you bench I was just doing dumbbells. I didn't even do the bar when I first started. I just do dumbbells because I needed to build up a lot of the stability strength. Like you, mm -hmm. when you take the bar, it'd be like, you know, all over the place because you just don't have that muscle strength to have a smooth bar push motion. So we started with dumbbells and I eventually moved to the bar and I just put tens on. I was going to try to work up to putting the, the quarters on because they're the next biggest one. And so it was very gradual. I started with just dumbbells. And uh, when did you start training? Uh, I was in my, um, I sort of messed around with it in my 20s. Like I'd do it for a while and then I'd stop or I'd pick it back up and I'd stop. And then um, toward my later 20s, I started doing it more consistently. And I think my first meet was 1999. So a while ago. <laughs> And so one of my favorite one of my favorite stories that Marissa's told me is about when she used to you know they had like a little weight set at their house mm -hmm. and you used to like hustle your brother's friends in bench press contests, right? Yeah, that's awesome. uh, win money. See how uh, guys never think that you can girls have upper body strength though. Right. Well, I think they think that even less when you're like an eighty pound twelve year old. Yeah, right. <laughs> Gave a whole new meaning to hustle. <laughs> <laughs> and did you? What about did you hustle them in any arm wrestling? Contests? Yeah, arm wrestling and bench pressing. So you were, I mean, you're because now people offer you money to. Yeah, arm they wrestle. do. Creepy <laughs> 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 older men. Or or awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so how long have you been training? Babe? I've been. I started lifting weights when I was seventeen. I was a gymnast before that, so I've been training for over twenty years. In this law. Um, well, I didn't make the volleyball team when I was a freshman in high school, so it was either cheerleading or powerlifting, and I obviously did not pick cheerleading, um, and I knew nothing about lifting, nothing, didn't know what a weight was, and so I just started in November 2002, but like the kicker though is I didn't, I, like my last competition was February 2008, and I didn't lift for five years, okay. I didn't, nothing, absolutely nothing, and I changed jobs. And I kind of got peer pressured back. And then uh, this lady here, after my first meet, like, see you at nationals. Yeah. You can't say no to her. No, she came after me. This one came after me. Yeah. Yeah. So you weren't going to tell her no. Like, no. She gives you that face. Well, I was just like, what are you talking about? Like, she, it's nationals. She, I was out of the game for five years. I knew nothing. She didn't so ask you if you were doing nationals. She told you. She told me, yeah. She's like, see you at nationals. This is 2013. So I've only been back, you know. Is it four years? So was powerlifting a high school sport for you? Um, it was. Um, it wasn't like a full blown sport, but yeah, we had competitions three what, or four a year. What state did you grow up in? Uh, Michigan. Okay. Originally from Michigan, yeah. So it was just a little, little, little school. Usually in the '30s graduation class, but we were in the '60s. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was a little tiny thing. Like I learned how to lift weights in a room this big. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Tiny. Just Life Podcast would like to thank one of our favorite sponsors, Virus International. Virus is the official compression gear and singlets of Team Juggernaut Weightlifting, and we are always happy to have their support and for you guys to support them. So please use Jug, J-U-G-G, for 10% off your order from Virus International. Yeah, and I'm sure people who, who watch your guys' lifts on, on Instagram and all that, you know, they might get the impression that it's all, it's all PRs and medals and world records and stuff, but... As everyone's faced challenges, Jen, what do you think has been one of your, your biggest challenges you've had to deal with as a lifter? The squats. The squats, every, everything about them. Everything about them. <laughs> you know, 
like me and I don't like them. Hey, <laughs> come on. Have you asked if you could maybe like do like a push up with the bar on your back? Or something? Well, you know, seeing that my bench is equivalent to my squat, <laughs> I could probably do that. <laughs> I don't know. The challenges are um, a lot of it is the knowledge, I think, especially when you first start, and especially if Kim, um, Kim you know, she started, um, I think, probably with some guidance in your track or whatever you were doing. Like, we started just, like, on our own. And you may not remember, Bonica, back in the 90s, the Internet was not big. <laughs> oh, no, even for, like, we went to competitions, you know, from 04 to 08, there really wasn't yeah. any Internet it or was, nothing. It was a lot of um, trying to figure things out on your own. And then yeah. you would go to these meets and try to gain some knowledge and apply it. And then, so it was a lot of um, trial and error. And we did a lot of things probably not as efficiently as we, we could have when we started. So that was probably the biggest challenge was figuring out how to do all this stuff correctly. And then how to program. And, you know, we have so much knowledge now. So like the, the first time you were you were squatting and deadlifting, it was just like... Well, I, I think you put it on your back and bend your knees and stand up, and like yeah. you just kind of went from there. I almost bombed out in the squat with 186 pounds. <laughs> I was left the <laughs> I was like, hi, the first one. I fell back into the squatter, spotters on the second one. They had to catch me. And then the third one, I think they were just being really nice. <laughs> and then I benched like 236, and I learned how to deadlift the day before. And I pulled 315. <laughs> right. Just pick it up off the floor. Right. So yeah, like, heavier and heavier. Hey, it was like, low. How hard is this? So, um, yeah, big learning curve. <laughs> Two, 236. Uh, when you benched 236 at your first powerlifting meet, was everyone there just like... Yes. There's a holy shit yeah, look on their face. And that was like raw, too, because everyone was wearing these bench shirts and their arms were sticking out. And I'm like, what the hell? Are <laughs> <they wearing? laughs> what is this stuff? And why do they walk around like zombies? You know, and like, this is so bizarre. Um, and so then I met uh, CJ Batten, who was kind of a, a coach from a really long time ago that was happened to be at that meet. And so he tried to like, well, this is a bench shirt. You know, you need wear this to be competitive and kind of gave me some tips and he's like you really need to go to nationals because like you're benching more than they're doing there without these shirts on so so when he said that you need this to be competitive i don't wasn't, wasn't wasn't quite right <laughs> <laughs> yeah i never really got much out of them honestly like I, I i won four ipf equipped world championships in the bench press first i only did bench press before i started powerlifting and I won four gold medals, but I probably only got 20, 15, 20 pounds out of them. Max, were you going to say something there? No, no, no. Uh, I, I was going to ask, have you guys ever had any, like, major injuries or setbacks or anything like that? I've had some injuries, but not from powerlifting. Like, I broke my ankle wakeboarding. I blew out my knee wakeboarding. I end up having to have neck surgery because I had a lot of trauma from wakeboarding. <laughs> then I quit wakeboarding. <laughs> She's hardcore, hard man. Hard. <laughs> like, this is a fluke. I can overcome this. I had my ACL replaced with a cadaverous ligament. And oh. then um, I had a pinched nerve, and I couldn't even raise my arm over my head. Hard. So it was like one wakeboarding injury, you get back on the horse yeah. there. But once you had three, it wasn't. It and wasn't then I decided it wasn't my sport. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I got good enough to really hurt myself. Is what it came down to. <laughs> but in- I did have to overcome those. <laughs> Definitely. What about injuries, challenges for you, Kim? Uh, the QL. That was the first real injury. I mean, I like to call everything else irritations. I say if it doesn't affect range of motion, then you can still work out. Then it's not a real injury. But I know I was just psyching myself up. But the real one was. Uh, QLs, I strained them, and it took me about a year to get um, to recover from that. And that was stuff you've been dealing with very recently, yeah. right? Yeah. What's a QL? Qu- quadratus libri, libri? Is there a muscle that goes up there or something? Yeah, yeah, that's why I said QLs, man. That's the name for them. How old are you, Monica? Um, and injuries or just general yeah, challenge, <laughs> challenges. <laughs> Um, so at uh, Raw Nationals, um, I decided to tell Kim on like one of my last squats, I hurt myself at Raw and at Nationals. For people who don't know, Kim is Bonica's coach. <laughs> so I'm like, Kim, I hurt myself. She's like, what? I'm like, yeah. 
Um, I hurt myself like so I strained my calf and my hamstring a little bit. Like during, doing what? During what the you doing? Before? Oh, it was the week before nationals. Um, it was just doing stiff leg deadlift. Not like uh-huh. no, uh-huh. it was stiff leg deadlift. <laughs> I, I hope you guys are catching Kim's face. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I told myself I'm not going to yell at her here. I, know. <laughs> she used to I thought I'd be fine. I'm just like okay. But she yelled at me for her. She's like, Do you know what she did? Did she really? Yes. <laughs> so that's like the really only injury I kind of really had. Um, challenges for me, um, honestly, it's just like in the gym working out. Like it's nice. I like to work out alone, but then I like to have people around and like a spotter. Like you know, I'm squatting over 500. I'm like, oh, slim picking on spotters today. They're all little beanpoles. <laughs> Sucks. Or like, okay, can anybody like give lift off over 275 on bench? Oh no. Like that's the hardest. It's just like I had a workout partner, but then he moved. And so it's just like so you, that's been you, a struggle. You the strongest person in your gym, male or female? Uh, it depends on the lift, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so which so it's rough. Which lift has been the hardest for you to, to bring along? A deadlift. Yeah. You know, because it's just uh, my anatomy, and it's just it's just hard to keep it close to the body. Well, you got a good good yeah. coach for that. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're gonna do this weekend. So, you know. <laughs> How about for you? Uh, I just had like thoracic lumbar in my back, and see before that, just minor stuff. What about uh, you know specifically for the the two of you? Bonica, do you have kids? Too? Yeah. No. Then I'm not asking you this question. <laughs> <laughs> All on this side. Yeah, those are the moms those, on that side. We're, we're, <laughs> yeah, for babies. Know, like ch- for babies. Ch- uh, the challenges of training, like through pregnancy, after, with the kids. Tell me about that. I trained through both my pregnancies. I didn't really like let that affect anything. Um, of course, towards the end, there's some things you have to modify because you can't do the same type of movement. But even after, I made it a point to get right back in the gym. And my kids have pretty much literally grown up in the gym. They hate it now, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, your daughter's kind of, sometimes she likes it. Sometimes she, well, yeah, when she sees the bikini girls and have big butts, then she likes it. But, yeah. but she doesn't want to have man hands. She doesn't like... want to have man hands or look manly. So, you know, but she's actually very strong. So it's kind of a pity that she's in that 13-year-old mindset right now. But my, my kids love the gym. They've always gone. My daughter's trained a few times and. Yeah, they really like, just don't have a choice. Like, parents. Lincoln's got his top his top abs. He's got his top abs, so he's pretty <laughs> pleased with that. But yeah, no, I think it's good. I think it's good that they've seen that I'm still chasing, you know, goals and stuff. Even though my daughter said that I was pretty unimpressive <gasps> at the Arnold because I said I was going to pull four twenty and I only pulled four thirteen. So <laughs> unimpressive. Oh, hardest, oh hardest critics you got there. Yes, they're the worst. Oh. Yeah, we gotta we gotta send you gotta send your daughter to Max and get her to, you know, some weightlifting. I do. Yeah. Put that gymnastics to work. What about for you, Jen? Um, I lifted well. My fir- my first son we adopted, so that was easy and the third thing. <laughs> and and you, you guys adopted him from Russia, Russia yeah. Right? And my intention was importing the lifters. Yeah, well, my intention was to continue that, and then Brody surprised me. <laughs> so I ended up. I lift. I, I did lift through his, his pregnant being with him, but I was always very careful. Kind of like the rule of thumb was like you can lift as long as you can talk through what you were doing and um you know it, it's sort of like a hard line you get a lot of questions about that and there's definitely things you shouldn't be doing mm-hmm. you know i mean i think it's great to stay in shape but ultimately you know you're not going to compete while you're pregnant so you're just trying to maintain a good health so i think that's important to keep that in mind but i really struggled when they were little they were a baby and two it was my weight, my competition weights probably stayed pretty stagnant for like three years. Like I really did, I just kind of hung in there. So tired all, we can swear, all the fucking time. <laughs> <laughs> I was just tired constantly. And then when you did work out, you know, like you got the kid in the car seat and you're trying to rock them and give them a bottle in between sets back and forth, back and forth. And um, it was, I mean, that time for me, like it was really dark. <laughs> Kids aren't watching this either. We didn't have family to watch kids yeah. or anything, so you know it was. It's definitely hard, but I think that's why it's important to continue yeah. still having some normalcy and doing the things that you did before you have kids. Because I think a lot of women think, "Oh, I'm going to have kids, my life is over." No, no it's not. Yeah, it changes. 
And Obviously, it's okay to it's say, not over. Like, yeah, and you don't have to pretend like it's all fantastic no, it definitely and great. Sucks. Like, it's rough. But now my kids are um, 11 and 13, and my older one's competing now, um, and he loves it. Like, he thinks it's awesome. My 11-year-old probably won't ever, because he's like, eh. And that's fine. You know, but this is where it gets fun, I feel like. Now that they're this age, and they're in yeah. there lifting with you, and he's really excited about it, um, it's awesome. Now, does the... Does he get worried that he's never going to bench press more than his mom? No, he, he, he thinks he's stronger than me. <laughs> and then when I try to like give him tips on the bench press, he acts like I don't know what the heck I'm talking oh, about. Of course and not. I have to remind him who I am. <laughs> I'm like, why are you arguing with me? Do you know who I am? Do you know what I do? <laughs> And it's like, you know, if you would come up and tell him, he'd be like, oh, that's great. Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh. So, yeah, that part's frustrating. That's funny. <laughs> well, I guess, that, I mean, that, that really happens to... I, I was the same way, like, listening to my, my parents about, you know, homework type of stuff. Mm -hmm. They could tell me something, and then if my brother would tell it to me, I'd do it. And, right. But if my mom did, I never would. You know, I don't think my, right. my mom probably couldn't bench, bench the bar, so I wouldn't have been taking advice from her there. But... <laughs> For them to still not listen. You know that it's it's easy to tell who's stronger. It's just who lifts more weight, right? Yeah. yeah. Well. But in his, he's got this sort of... He, he lives in this really world of glass, rose, you know, <laughs> rose-colored glasses, like yeah. where it's just everything's great, you know, and we need to work on that. <laughs> <laughs> I need to bring my kid down. Yeah. <laughs> Knocking down a few pegs. But he's doing really good. He... he you know, he's got those Russian genetics, so he's super strong, just like you were talking about with your kids. Like he's when since he was little, he's always been ripped with muscle. Like he looks like a little Hercules dude. And so weightlifting just was easy progression for him. So he likes it. But it, it, as a parent, like I struggle with like how much I push him and but then you don't want to be that mom. Mm -hmm. So how much you have to push them to understand you have to work hard to get success, but the same point not pushing them bullying them too too roughly you yeah. know what I mean so it's a it's a tough balance honestly I don't push mine if they want to do it great if they don't they don't well I feel like Tucker like he has a meet coming up in April and he's sort of been slacking up I'm like well you said you were going to do this I paid for it you will work your ass off and then, uh, <laughs> until April and then if you don't want to do it fine but you committed to this and you're going to do it and you're going to do it the best you can do you ever come over like he just did a max a one rep max on the bench come over and knock it out for like a set of ten and you're like no. How about you go clean your room now? <laughs> do, do the dishes. No, I wouldn't do that. Flex <laughs> the Jug Life Podcast is brought to you by Grind Sports Nutrition. Grind Sports Nutrition was developed by the minds at Juggernaut and Renaissance Periodization, and we are proud to fuel the world's hardest working athletes. Use Jug for 10% off your order from Grind Sports Nutrition. So with, with huge growth of the sport of powerlifting um, the last few years and you know, social media and CrossFit and all that stuff to thank for it, a lot of new women coming into the sport, a lot of people, a lot of women, men and women, but particularly women, maybe on the fence thinking, is this for me? Do I want to do it? If What advice, we'll just go around to each of you, what advice do you have for that woman new to the sport or maybe someone who's on the fence wondering if powerlifting is for them. I'm going to take it, well, I'm going to take a page out of uh, something Jen has talked about at some of our camps in the past and something that came up in conversation um, with, a, with a bunch of different lifters at our Canadian Nationals while we were waiting around to try to get back from snowy Quebec into the real world. Um, so we had lots of time to talk. But one of, the, one of the things Jen has talked about, and I'm a big believer of this, and I even think Mark Bell's kind of on a bit of a kick on this as well, which is basically... Um, share your knowledge and, and bring someone along for the ride, you know, because it's fine and great if we're just in the gym and doing our own thing. Um, but there are people, so yes, there's going to be those people on the fence, but there's going to be people that are on the fence, but they're just looking for that moment to, to jump in. And really what it takes is just that one person to, to say, hey, you, right? Like, have you thought of competing? Um, and I think that's just the, the question that needs to be asked. So we got to be out there kind of proselytizing and preaching um, that this can be for you. Um, and then the second thing is to give them that opportunity because just as one gal shared with me, she said, you know, the moment the bar was put in my hands, I knew that powerlifting was for me. And, and I think that's a really 
it's a powerful thing, right? Because, I mean, we know the connection that we have to the barbell, right, when you pick it up. Whether you feel like training or not, right, you still go and you put the bar in your hands, you put the bar in your back, Jen, and you do the squat workout, or, you know, you get into your, into your deadlifts, you get into your bench press, whatever it is, and more than likely, like Arnold Schwarzenegger said this, you know what, I'm going to go to the gym, and if, even if I don't feel like training, I'm going to start, and if I feel like leaving after that, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go. But, but more, most often, we get into our training, we feel the bar, we, we feel all those emotions, and then, you know, we're in it, and we, and we stay. And so I think those two things, you know, if you're already in it, go and um, bring someone else along for the ride. And then the other thing is just get that bar, you know, get that bar in your hands. If you're on the fence, just put it in your hands and see what happens. I would say um, finding the right type of support system with regards to like coaching and your training partners. Uh, I've been fortunate since the beginning that I've had like literally some of the best lifters in history as friends and family and they've helped guide my career throughout the whole time even up to present day and it's nice to be able to surround yourself with people who understand your goals in lifting and will keep pushing you and it doesn't matter regardless of level of you know success whether you're a champion or whether you're a local lifter it's the fact of having people around you who understand your goals and continuously push you towards them so I would, and then with regards to the coach I would say having that coach who has the experience to take you to where you need to be, but also understanding that if the coach isn't able to do that for you, being able to, to break if necessary and find that person that's going to help you continue pushing towards your goals. And that's something that's going to last throughout your whole career. You're always going to need a coach or, or a mentor or mentors, and you're always going to need great training partners because I don't feel like any of us gets to where we are now or where we will be without people supporting us do it so wow how do I follow all that <laughs> oh um, well honestly like well first thing I think of is like how do you know you don't like it if you don't try it you know you gotta try it. you gotta stick it out there just like when I changed jobs I just picked a different job and hey I'm still there for four years um but kind of building off what you were saying it's the gym environment you gotta have a nice good community and people that will push you people that'll help you like, yeah, even though I said they're slim pickings of spotters, but they're great people and they'll still help me, even though they might not have the confidence, but they'll still help me out. Um, and she kind of took everything I wanted to say. <laughs> Yeesh, I really think alike, I guess. Um, but yes, a coach, having somebody there motivate you. Like, there's been days when my coach, I don't feel good. I don't, I don't have it in me. And then, like, she just sparks me and, like, sends text messages, motivational messages, and boom, I get the fire and go. And just, just surrounding yourself with the people. And then, like, when I come to powerlifting meets, like, everybody loves to go to, like, Christmas and Thanksgiving. I'm like, I don't care about those holidays. Because this kind of thing, this is my holiday. This is what I treasure. So it's the people, you know? Oh, and then, like, when you come to it, like, I forgot the question already. <laughs> it was advice. It was advice about it. But I just think, just try it. Just step out and just try it. I, you know, give us a shot. Do a meet. Meet the community of people. That's what makes the sport great. It's the people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you guys haven't. So you guys all had like a great, a great like. Here's what. Here's the ideal sort of way to bring people in. Do you have any like, maybe like things that you see that have changed? Because all you guys competed for for so long, and and we all know kind of what it was like 10, 15 years ago. The the landscape of meets and all this, and the whole community. Are there things now you would tell like a new lifter or maybe if you saw a lifter kind of doing things, not just like technique or training wise, but maybe things you would say to avoid or things you would say, hey, you don't want to go down that road or, you know, you want to try and, and start like this or, or there's things that maybe have changed about the, the landscape that you, you know, kind of don't, don't enjoy as much or don't think is a positive uh, aspect to it or if there is anything well i think sort of like what kim was saying you know with um social media and youtube and stuff there's so much information about out there it's not always good right, right? so you have to really be careful um you know with her comment about the coaches you know there's so many online coaches now um and there's you know a good there's some people that will just be, grab onto a big name and then say i'm the greatest coach ever and you know you can really have good skills as to picking a good coach and looking at who they coach and who they actually started with 
and made good, I think. So I think when you're looking to get into the sport, you can't just go into it by, blindly. You have to do some research, maybe get some personal recommendations, but also look at when you're going to spend money on something, and some of these um, things are pretty expensive. <laughs> if you're going to spend money on something, you need to make sure it's good quality and that and that you've seen that they've developed a good product. And then, then like Kim said too, like it's okay if that person just isn't working for you. There's lots of other options out there. Um, so I think you have to be kind of smart about it now because when we first started, there was nothing. Yeah. Like there There's was no, no YouTube, no social media. It was a, We were reading Muscle and Fitness Magazine trying to figure yeah. out how to do some things. Well, and just how much, how much different yeah. the USA... Once yeah. a month. Yeah. 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 Just how much different the USAPL was. I mean... You said your first meet was in 1999. Mm -hmm. Did you have a nationals in 1999? Mm -hmm. And there was maybe... It was a, it was a handful of people. And it was yeah. like in a VFW hall. Uh -huh. I mean, it was, it was just bad. <laughs> so we're going from maybe maybe 100 people, absolute maximum, yeah. even less yeah. than that, to yeah. now 1,200 lifters right. yeah. this year. That's got to be very cool for you guys to, to know that I mean, you're probably a big reason why that growth is... Mm -hmm. has occurred, but that's going to be a way, a way different vibe right. <laughs> than before. Well, and I think you're, when you're talking about someone that just is not sure about getting into it, I mean, lots of people are doing some great seminars now, so what a great opportunity just to get in and listen to someone with some knowledge and get your feet wet that way. You know, um, you know, you guys are doing seminars, the juggernaut, we are, I mean, lots of people are doing so, all sorts of things, so you have so many opportunities where you could just check into it. And then put your feet in, you know, kind of gradually work your way, way into things. That's so nice. I wish I had that. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't have the internet back then or anything. It was rough. I think most girls get afraid of getting too bulky, getting yeah. too big, and, yeah. or wanting to look a certain way. So my advice would be chase strength. The looks will come. The aesthetics will come from that. And, you know, don't try to cut weight for, like, people who are currently in the sport. I think this is the biggest mistake females make is trying to be in the, you know... Yeah. The lowest weight class possible mm -hmm. if they're five foot seven. It's like, no, fill out your frame. Take some time to fill out your frame. And it takes time to put on muscle. Lots and lots of well, time. it cracks me up like when you talk to people like, Oh, I'm not gonna do a meet yet because like I'm not gonna win that one. I need to I need to get my numbers up. Who cares? It's, that's just silly. Like Who you cares? just need to get into it. Like there's such a huge learning curve in here. Just get your feet wet. You can't it, it seems so silly to me that you think you're on your very first meet you're gonna go in and like PR everything and worry yeah. about where you place. I mean, there's so often that you just need to get in there and do it and meet and people. Yeah. And quit putting so much pressure on this one moment. We did a video a couple of weeks ago, uh, like a guide to your first powerlifting meet. And that's a pretty common excuse I hear is like, well, I'm not strong enough to do a meet yet. Mm -hmm. And if you're waiting to be strong enough to do the meet, you're never going to be strong enough. Like, cause you're right. always going to want to be stronger before you do it. Right. Because everyone else is going to keep getting stronger as well. So I think it, it is important to just kind of, dive in and do like a practice meet or something yeah. or just know you're just going to get in there Josh Rohr was talking about that the other day and he goes I make my athletes before they're even ready I make them go do one and all we're going to do is just get three lifts here three lifts here three lifts here I mean he doesn't even let them max out just makes them get in there and do it you know the, the couple yeah. times we've been to uh, Australia the thing that gyms are really big on there is they do these novice comps which are like mm -hmm. unsanctioned it's almost like a, a meet plus a clinic mm -hmm. kind of. So, yeah, if, if you jump the start command, you know, they'll still give you the lift and they'll tell you, make sure you fix this on the next one. You know, they're not passing, like, high squats and unlocked deadlifts. You know, this isn't an IPA meet, but it's just <laughs> not for novices. <laughs> they, uh, they, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ruthless against all federations. So, they, uh, but I think that's, that's something that might be worth worthwhile starting to – push in the, in the U.S. is that lower stress sort of environment. Right. The Jug Life Podcast is brought to you by Trifecta Nutrition. Trifecta brings you prepared meals and prepared food that are going to be a great fit for your renaissance diet or any other diet that you're doing or if you're just looking for the con convenience of great tasting prepared food, visit trifectanutrition.com backslash juggernaut to order your food today. Uh, so coming up next... For you all, competition-wise, anyone have anything between now and Worlds? I have the Raw Bench Press Worlds in four weeks. In it's back to yeah, Colleen, to oh, Texas, huh? Oh, yeah. Just couldn't oh, get enough Colleen. <laughs> <laughs> no one can get enough Colleen. Hey, it's my, hey, it's my <laughs> holiday. Don't ruin my holiday. I get to see my friends. <laughs> Come on. See your friends and then be like, I all right. my friends. Oh, friends. I'm going to Dallas afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> Somewhere cool. Yeah, like, let's let's try to go It's my kid's spring break. I'm like, we're going to Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Uh, 
<laughs> so ben- bench worlds there. I mean, I was, what, what's the, the goal? Another world record? And, uh, yeah, yeah, whatever it is. <laughs> 152. Yeah, let's go for that. <laughs> and we'll, we'll go have a party in, in Belarus. Yeah, I'm excited about yeah. that. It's going to be fun. That, that'll be exciting. What about uh, what's coming up next? Iron Sisters wise, where are you off to next? We're off to Gaglioni Strength in Long Island, March, uh, no, April Gags. 1 and 2. Gags. Gags. April 1 and 2. And then we're in Jen's Neck of the Woods. Jen, yeah. Brutal Iron Brutal Gym Iron. in South Carolina. Yes, Fort uh, Rock Hill, just, just right. south of Charlotte. Good deal. Yeah. The, uh, well, awesome, man. Where can people sign up for so that? So they can sign up at ironsistersusa.com slash registration. And, uh, and then we'll also be announcing, uh, or we'll also be opening registration for the original Iron Sisters Strength Camp back in Canada in Hamilton, Ontario. That's July 21 to 23. Yeah. All right, good time. And where can uh, people learn more and follow along with each of you on social media? So Iron Sisters on Facebook, Iron Sisters on Instagram, Track Brew on Instagram, and Kimberly Walker on Facebook. There was some debate the other day whether it was track foo or if it was track fu, it's track foo. <laughs> Basically, that was the name of my high school varsity track clip. We considered like track is like spiritual, is like an art, like kung fu. So we cl- named our click of varsity players track foo, and I just kept it in you. I thought I always thought it was that you really liked the CD shack Fu. That's not what it was. Okay. <laughs> what about you, Monica? Um, I'm Bubbly Powerlifter on Instagram. That doesn't yeah. make sense. I know, it's horrible. It should be like, I don't know, antagonist lifter or something. Maya, you thought you met. Or Marissa. That's M A R I S A I N D A. Such a hard time saying that. You guys don't have that shit. You don't even need like a number after it. Nobody has that name. No, someone else does. No, actually, my mom named me after my cousin who lives in Spain, who has the exact same name. Thanks, mom. So creative. Oh. And I mean, you and your sister almost have the same name too. I know. Yeah. Juanita needs to work on her name selection. Yes, she does. Uh, for social media, it's Jen Thompson 132, and then Facebook's 132 Pounds of Power, and YouTube too. All right. Uh, then coming up next in the Juggernaut world, we have a squat workshop April 8th with myself, Marissa, and Max, the computer man, Montana. Uh, then the weekend after that, the 15th, we have a snatch workshop. Max, Joanne, Colin, Courtney, Pomp. Pope, all teaching that. Should I be there teaching? Uh, you would be there, but you're not as good as me. Uh, <laughs> Max, who's better at snatching? <laughs> it's definitely Chad right now. That's right. I would think that was Chad. by a small margin, though. By, I don't know if you win by Sinclair at this point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sinclair. Well, are we using uh, Sinclair Malone Metzler, or what's the... Well, if, it's adjusted, if it's age adjusted, she's going to crush you. Oh, damn it. <laughs> Boom. Just a, aesthetics, though. It's me, for sure. And how surprising it is that I'm good. I also win on whatever that coefficient is. <laughs> <laughs> the shock value coefficient. Okay. So we've got that coming up in April. Then the end of April, uh, myself, Dr. Quinn, Dr. Mike... Dr. James Hoffman will be in Arlington, Texas for a Juggernaut Performance Summit, teaching all about programming, nutrition, mobility, and recovery. All the big four things you need to know to really have an effective program, all under one roof in one day. Simultaneously, Max will be in New Zealand with a couple of clinics out there. Uh, Send him an email, max at jtsstrength.com, to learn more for that. Then... We have our dueling seminars in Texas. Right. I will be in Austin. Max will be in the much less fun College Station the weekend of June 3rd and 4th. So check those out. And uh, registration for for sure. Mine will be up on the website soon. And uh, and is Brazos Valley Barbell is handling all the stuff for Max. Or send him, send him an email about that. Beyond that, subscribe to the YouTube. Best lifting YouTube content there is. 
We're very proud of what we do there. Uh, Juggernaut Online Coaching Programs, check that out. Also, thank you to our wonderful sponsors, Virus International, Grind Sports Nutrition, Trifecta Nutrition, and Pastries and Power Cleans. It's a lifestyle. If you enjoyed the podcast, head over to iTunes, give us a five-star rating. Maybe write us a funny review and we'll read it <laughs> on the podcast. Thank you to the Iron Sisters. Yay. I wanted to call it Women of the USAPL, but I was vetoed. You're not allowed to say USAPL anymore. It's USA Powerlifting. Oh, Get okay. it right. oh we're not supposed well, to say USAPL. I, well, I only break the rules. <laughs> yeah, I'm breaking bad, the rules too. I'm a bad boy of the USAPL. <laughs> you know, I'm a, non, a, a non-competing member now as well. So. I, I was, I, I was going to wear a, a public enemy number one, a public enemy oh. t-shirt to to the Arnold. But, uh, you know, they're, they're riding high. They're riding high on, on Team CWS at least for another week. But, uh, this is the Jug Life Podcast. Go ahead. Give us a five-star review on iTunes if you enjoyed it. And if you didn't, go listen to some something else. <laughs> he's, he's Max Ada at Mac, or Max underscore Ada on Instagram. Find him on Facebook on his fan page, the illustrious Max yeah. Ada fan page. Poppin', that was a good Q&A you had the other day. I, I liked like the it. page. Well, 120 people can't be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Chad Wesley Smith, at Chad Wesley Smith, and at Juggernaut Training on Facebook and Instagram, filling up your news feed all day. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you to all of you. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Have a good one. Thank you. Toodles. <laughs>